Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use something called match geometry effect to create this kind of transition in Swift UI. So this kind of transition is pretty common in a lot of apps. Um, for example, if you open up Instagram and you tap on a story, uh, or if you tap on a listing in Airbnb, instead of a push transition, you get this really nice um, sort of expanding effect where the thing you're tapping on expands in place and you, get, you go into a new detail view. Um, so that's essentially what match geometry effect allows you to do uh, with very little code. It takes care of all the complex positioning and scaling that you would have to do manually. So we're going to build out this like simple contact card and um, hopefully that gives you a general idea how it works so that you can apply the same effect in your own projects. So to get started, let's jump into Swift Playgrounds and create a new app. And the first thing we'll do is we'll add some images that we're going to need. Um, we're going to need a profile image. And let's add a background image to make things a little more interesting. Name this background. And then we'll jump back into our content view. And before I actually start writing code here, um, the basic way we want to set this up is we want to build out the two views that we're going to be transitioning between. And once we have those views built, we're going to set a state variable to uh, switch between them and then uh, add some animation and then finally the match geometry effect to sync up the different parts of our views that we want to uh, animate between. So that's kind of the gist of, of what we're going to build. And I'll start by first just kind of adding that background uh, image using a Z stack and image background. I'll set this to resizable and ignore safe area. And our views are going to sit on top of this image. So um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another Z stack that our two views are going to sit in. And the first view is going to be our small card. And our next view is going to be our large card. Now, we don't want both of these views visible at once. So what we need to do is we need to uh, create a state variable and then add a conditional statement that says only show one of these at a time. So I'll name this state variable expanded. And I'll set this to false. And then right here is where we're going to use our conditional. So I'll say if expanded is false, show the small card. Else, show the large one. And we can test this out really quick by adding a on tap gesture and then saying expanded.toggle. And now if I click on this, it should switch back and forth, which it is. All right, so now we can go ahead and build out the small card first. And the small card is going to be a H stack with our image and our two lines of text. So the first thing is the image, which is our profile. And it's huge, so let's set it to resizable. And we'll set the frame to something small like 40 by 40. And then we also want to clip the shape so that it's a circle. OK. And then next to the image, we're going to have a V stack with our two text lines of text. So the first line is going to be the name. Milton. And we'll set the font to headline. And we'll set the color to primary. And then I'm going to copy paste this for our second line. And this is going to be the follower count. So we'll say followers. And the font here is going to be subheadline. And the color is going to be secondary. All right. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to align these to the left. So we'll say alignment leading. 
There we go. All right, the next thing we need to do is we need to add the background to this small card. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say background rounded rectangle corner radius 8. And we're also going to add some padding here. Okay, cannot corner size is the wrong property. We want corner radius. There we go. Okay. And let's set the fill to clear. And we'll set the background to regular material to get that nice kind of frosted effect. Um, also say corner radius eight. And set a shadow too. All right, so one thing that you'll notice is I'm using a rounded rectangle here for our background. And the reason uh, I didn't just set the background to regular material is because mass geometry effect only works well with images, shapes, text views, um, and uh, buttons, I believe. Uh, it might work with some other stuff, but those are the ones that I know of. Um, it does not work well with container views, so H stacks, V stacks, Z stacks. Um, if you try to make it work with those container views, you'll get some really weird results. So um, if you're using this, make sure you stick to the views that it works well with. So in this case, we're using a shape view. Um, so this card's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to copy paste this whole, uh, this whole bit of code. And we're going to add this to our large card view right here. And to see what we're actually doing, I'm going to set that to, um, I'm going to change that conditional. And for our large card, we're just going to make a couple changes here. First, this is going to be a V stack. And our image is going to be a lot bigger. I'm going to say 120 by 120. And this doesn't need to be leading anymore. We want this centered. And the card's a lot bigger, so we're going to set the uh, frame of this to be max width infinity and we'll add some padding here. And uh, we also want to offset the whole thing set so that it's kind of up on the top of the screen. So I'll say like negative 120 for now. And let's see, the frame actually should go before the background. There we go. Okay, so if I click this, it's gonna look pretty janky because we're kind of abruptly changing between these two, um, these two views. So what we want to do now is we want to add the animation and then uh, after that, the match geometry effect to get that really smooth transition. So down here in our on tap gesture, we'll add with animation. And we're going to use a spring. And I'm going to use just some values that I kind of stick with to get started. 0.1. And then we'll move this expanded dot toggle inside of our width animation. So now when I tap on it, you're going to get it's slightly better, but still kind of janky. It fades in and out. Um, but now this is where the magic of match geometry uh, happens. So what we're going to do here is um, for a rounded rectangle, we're going to add match geometry effect. And the first thing that it's going to ask for is an ID. And the ID is basically um, a way for Swift to identify uh, what are the two shapes or elements that we want to match up when we're doing that animation or, or syncing between views. So for our ID, we're going to say BG because the rounded rectangle is our background. And for the namespace, we're going to set this to NS. Now, the namespace is uh, just another way for Swift to understand what are the two, what are the views um, here that we actually need to sync up. Um, 
And it's a way to prevent just kind of collisions and um, make sure that the things that we're animating are, are supposed to be animating together. Um, there's a lot more to it, but that's kind of the gist of it. Um, so you want to set the namespace and you're going to get an error because we haven't actually created the namespace variable yet. So we want to jump up here right under our expanded state variable and say namespace variable ns. And now what we can do is we can grab match geometry effect and we can apply it to our smaller card um, where our rounded rectangle is. And now when we click between these two, you'll notice that the background is now kind of seamlessly transitioning from one, one state to the other. So that's, that's it. That's how easy it is to get these two views sort of syncing up with each other. And now that we've got this all working, it's as easy as copying this line and we can start to apply this to all of our other views. So we will apply this to our image and we'll say profile uh, here and then we'll copy paste this to our other one. Right here. And now we should see our profile image also kind of syncing up. And lastly, we're going to do the same thing with this, these two lines of text. So we'll say match geometry effect name, match geometry effect count, and then same thing down here, name, count. And now everything should be kind of animating in place. Okay, so that's it. That's how simple it is to use match geometry effect to get these really smooth transitions from one view to the next. Um, when you're setting this up, um, think about the different views that you kind of want to sync up in the animation. Um, you're not always going to want to have everything um, animate together. Uh, sometimes, you know, animating too much stuff can be a little too much motion going on. So. Um, think about the different parts of your views that you want to animate. And, uh, and yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned um, how to use this, and I hope you can uh, start to apply this in your own projects. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. All right.